Hey, welcome to the table. It is a new year, and so we've got tons of new episodes and new content coming for you this year. Uh, if you're new to the Welcome to the Table podcast, this is a podcast just about following Jesus in uncertain times and growing in disciplines and as a stronger follower of Jesus. And so I would just encourage you, if you are new, uh, hit the subscribe button from wherever you're listening. We would also love to encourage you to just rate and review. That means the world to us, and it's super helpful to get this content in front of more people and And of course, if it's beneficial to you, we would love if you'd hit the share button and share it on social media, wherever that is, so more people can come to the table and benefit from the content that we have. There's so much great stuff coming this year, and we're excited for all that is in store. Now, uh, we also have a a repeat guest at the table today, don't we, Sean? Yes, we do. By the way, if you didn't catch who that was. That is Khalil Burton. Oh yeah, that's me. And I just want to introduce you really quickly because it is a new year. It is, it is, it's a fresh new year. And, um, and so, and we do, we, we do have, uh, new, uh, people subscribing and following and uh, jumping on. So Khalil Burton, he is, I am Sean Silveri. This is Jeff Sandstrom. It's so good to be here with uh, you boys. Yeah. A repeat guest. And, um, Jeff, I just have to know one thing. Yes. Shoot, Sean. Where do you get your glasses? Mm. Um, I uh, I literally this get has them. to be this has to be on the artwork for yeah the <laughs> the the pot when we release this <laughs> my uh, glasses. episode it, we have to have the gla- your yeah, glasses absolutely. why would they not be at the, exactly my point so totally makes sense um, they come in the mail okay. uh, they come mm. from a company named Warby Parker <laughs> <laughs> and. The yeah, that's uh, that's it. I I didn't know that's what we were starting off with, but yeah, I didn't great. either, man. I didn't either. No, but you are. The, I mean, for those who are newer to uh, to the the podcast, you have uh, been friends. Well, we've been friends for a while. A I long have been time. friends. Yes, <laughs> we have been friends for a long time. Long. You time. and I went to school together. Yeah, I feel like together. you're about to tell a story, and I'm kind of excited about it. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Okay, good. I'll let you tell the stories, and then and then Khalil. Uh, you've also been friends with Khalil for a while too. Khalil's actually visited your church. You, you are, uh, well, let me just have you tell us where are you hailing? Where do you hail from? <laughs> where are, are you? you? Where are you who hailing are you? from? <laughs> who are you? Uh, tell us about your lovely wife. Just give uh, a little bit of a rundown on you, uh, before we dive in. So great. Okay. Uh, that's great. Thanks, Sean. Uh, my welcome. name is Jeff. Um, I am, uh, um, a church planter at heart. I'm, a pastor now. I work at a mega church in Chicagoland in Naperville, Illinois. I oversee all of our campuses and on the preaching team there. And um, prior to that, we planted a church in Chicagoland. And prior to that, we planted a church in Berkeley, California. And uh, before that, I was at school in college with you, Sean. <laughs> and uh, you were a senior and I was a freshman and we were on the soccer team together. It was great. Yeah. Learned a lot from you. And uh, life was just, uh, yeah. Fantastic. I learned how to not play sports. No, how to, it, not to play soccer. Let's just say no. It was firm, Sean. Here, real quick. It, it was it, it was the total <laughs> opposite. Sean, you were a knight not in shining true. armor, especially when you and the other captains uh, duct taped me to a tree in the middle of the night. That was just. I know you love telling that story, so I'm just throwing it out there for you. It there is for, a fun story to tell. Uh, I don't. Is. I feel like we told it though the last time you were on this podcast. And if you Sean, haven't listened, so. Sean, every time you introduce me to speak somewhere or at some sort of event, you tell that story. So I'm sure the world knows that I've been duct taped with half my clothes onto a tree <laughs> in the courtyard in Central Bible College at some point. I was 22. I wasn't there. <laughs> I was 22, <laughs> folks. Oh, yes, I love it. we That's love great. you. And we love that you love Jesus. You love your wife. Yes. Uh, you love your church. You love the church, capital C. And uh, you love the kingdom of God. And not just the kingdom of God, you love the king yeah. of that kingdom, our King Jesus. And so we want to talk a little bit about uh, that on this episode, um, one of the kind of one of the passages that's most famous mm-hmm. that Jesus is most famous for is the Lord's Prayer. Okay, and so I thought it would just be good. Well, actually, Khalil came up with this idea, which was it was really a great idea, and we could just kind of read this and then let you kind of talk to us a little bit about uh, verse ten specifically. But let's read it in context. So yeah. Jesus is in the middle of his um uh magnum opus his his uh, sermon uh, on the mount that i'm really yeah. happy that you dropped that. i can't the believe magnum opus. i actually got the words out of my mouth correctly it's perfect it's such it's a late. tough one yeah. to get right 
I love that we were just, it was just going to sound impressive and we were going to keep moving. And then it was like, let's pause and just recognize. No, I we... needed a bookmarker right there. I was like, let's just pause for a second and not pretend like we use that word every day and just like look at the, the, the Shekinah glory that That's it awesome. shines all around us. And at this point, 90% of our listeners have checked out. <laughs> and so I'll just encourage you to flip over to Matthew chapter 6 Matthew at this six. moment if you have a Bible. Good job, Matthew Khalil. 6. Yes, I'm going to be reading out of the English Standard Version. I think all of us will hear. Uh, all three of us here. Um, so, yeah, uh, Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is telling about the kingdom. He's, in essence, uh, ushering in the kingdom and says to his first followers or disciples, pray then like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will, you, uh, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And I think it's just, uh, just a, 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 something we need to memorize, you know, obviously. But what does this mean? For us today, like in current culture, when you look specifically at verse 10, mm-hmm. Jeff yeah. Sandstrom, um, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What are we talking? What is Jesus talking about? Mm. Yeah. What is he talking about? That's a, that's a really good question. Thanks for, I, I felt like when you uh, recited that, Sean, yeah. like we were in Catholic church and we all should have been saying it together. Like the mm-hmm. Lord's Prayer is something that we all kind of, yeah, it's, there is something very um, liturgical about it and it kind of brings us, uh, it snaps us back to reality a little bit. And uh, I, I do appreciate that. You know, funny thing, Jesus gives his disciples this example of uh, how to follow when they're praying, right? And uh, the prayer has this beginning invocation and six petitions that give these proper priorities. And the first three are these petitions of focus on preeminence of God, while the final three focus on the personal needs of a community within context. And uh, Matthew, so uh, six, verse 10, Christians are called to pray and work for this continual advance of God's kingdom on earth. And uh, the presence of God's kingdom is in this age, and it refers to the reign of Christ in the hearts and lives of believers, and to the reigning presence of Christ in this body, the church, so that they increasingly reflect his love, God's love, obey his laws, honor him, do good for all people, and that they proclaim the good news of the kingdom. Then we get on to all these other uh, petitions. This third petition speaks of God's will. This means God's revealed will, and you can read more about that in Ephesians chapter 5. I think it's verse 17. It involves a conduct that is pleasing to him and revealed in Scripture. So just as God's will is perfectly experienced in heaven, Jesus prays that it will be experienced here on earth as well. The will of God will be expressed in its fullness only when God's kingdom comes in its final form, when Christ returns in the power of great, great glory. But it will increasingly be seen in this age as well, which is I think maybe a little bit of what we're trying to hit on now is that uh, it's not just this place that we're going to have this disembodied evacuation to later. Like heaven is great, but it's not like the cartoons teach us, right? Where we live our lives and, and then someday when we die some way, somehow, and then our bodies lay down on the ground and our spirit that's like almost see-through, like floats up into heaven, we sit on the cloud and we play a harp and sing holy, holy, holy forever and ever and ever. That actually sounds really, really boring. (laughs) I mean, I don't mean, sorry for anybody out there and you're like, oh, I can't wait to wear a white gown and sit on a cloud for all of eternity. That just sounds really boring. I just don't know that God created us for that and that alone. I feel like, um, especially the way that we see things in scripture, the Bible doesn't end with us floating up into heaven. The Bible ends with heaven crashing into earth and God says that he will make all things new here and now. So that's what this is about. Uh, Khalil and I were talking earlier today about uh, scripture verses. Like Jesus has this uh, sermon on the mount where, you know, um, he sits down and he's telling all these people that have come out on this hillside about uh, everything from divorce to reconciliation and beatitudes and all this kind of stuff. And he talks about this, uh, he talks about the... um, 
uh, treating others the way that you want to be treated. And he starts talking about the, the narrow road and the wide road and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I just don't know that when he talks about, because the Bible says that, and Jesus said, you know, um, the, the road is wide that leads to destruction and many find it. And then the road that leads, um, the road that's narrow, um, and few find it. And a lot of people are like, oh, that means that only few people are going to get into heaven and many people are going to go to hell. And that's not what Jesus was getting at. It's not about the number of how many people are going to this road or that road. It's about the ease of which these roads come to us, right? So a lot of us like to say, oh, the narrow road, you've got to be strict and right on in order to get to heaven because some are in and some are out. And I just don't know that that's the God that we serve. I don't know that the God that we serve is like, yeah, we're going to punish and torture people in hell forever and ever and ever who don't choose to follow me because they deserve it. And everybody that chooses me can sing to me and worship me forever. Like, that's not the God that we serve. We serve a God of love. The Bible says that God is love. And so if God loves us so much, he'll give us exactly what we want. So if we choose to live this life away from him and without him, he will give us that. And we'll live forever and ever and ever without him. Now, keeping in mind that he doesn't torture us, but without God means without love because God is love. So that's in a dark, cold place, away from God, no sense of love. And the Bible says that all good things come from God, which means in this other place that's away from God, there are no good things. So cold, dark, no love, and no good thing. Some people call this hell, and I understand why. Now, there's another side of this where you say, yes, I understand God, and I want his kingdom, his heavenly realm to be with me forever and ever. And God says, okay, you will be with me forever and ever and ever. And that's the love that we experience. And that's the the, the kind of thing that we're trying to usher here on earth. Because I think sometimes God needs a body. I think that um, even the Trinitarian Godhead kind of proves a little bit of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And at some point, God said, okay, through my son Jesus, I'm going to use this body and show people what it's like to be Emmanuel, to be me, right? So in that, I kind of feel like God says, sometimes I need a body, and he used Jesus. But the thing, it's not just Jesus. I think sometimes he would use you and me, and all of you out there that are listening right now, he wants to use you too. That's the beauty of all this. So um, yeah, someday heaven will crash into earth and all things will be made new, but heaven is in a different place. It's a different realm, right? So if you think about this as a Venn diagram, two different realms, there's heaven, there's earth in the middle, they kind of intersect. And those are spots when heaven touches earth. And we feel that, we get a sense from that yeah. day in and day out. Every time you feed the homeless, you clothe the homeless, you uh, make the world a better place, even recycling, just e- even, uh, um, and giving towards other, whatever it is that looks like uh, putting on Jesus and being that in this world is bringing heaven to earth. And you feel it even sometimes, like in your worship services, if that song comes on and that point, the bridge, and you're like, yes, Jesus, mm-hmm. you throw your arms up and you feel the presence of God. That's a little bit of heaven touching earth. And so someday Jesus is coming back and all things will be made brand new. And so when Jesus says, pray like this, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, he's asking you to join with the Father to help bring the heavenlies here on earth, give people a little bit of a taste of what's to come so they don't miss out on it. And you and I get to play a part. Someday Jesus is coming back, but until then, there's lots of work to do. And Jesus is trusting us with that. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting, as we talk about, you know, this, the Matthew chapter, we're, we're talking about Jesus uh, ushering in his kingdom. And um, I've talked a little bit about this with uh, the students in our student ministry, just the idea that Jesus is establishing a kingdom with its own its own rules, its own structure, yep. its, its own guidelines and expectations and all of these things. And it's not just something for the future. It's, it's actually can be something for now. Um, yes. And it's interesting when you talk about <laughs> the realms that heaven and hell aren't necessarily places somewhere else or for the future, but that, um, that heaven can be here Yes. and that it's in the presence of God, yes. which makes me th- think as you're saying that, I'm just like, if, if heaven can be here, then does that also mean hell can be here too at the same time? Um, And so are we talking about through what, through our actions, through our lives, we can somehow exist in this current world, this current life in one of those two realities? Yeah. uh, Great thought and a great question. Um, I believe yes. 
I think if heaven is able to be present with us right here and now, hell is surely present with, I don't think you need to have the news on for too long to see that that's true. Mm. Hell is real and it's around us everywhere we turn and look. And I'm not even taking away from the place that, um, away from the idea that it is also a, a, a place. Mm a destination, a eternal destination, even mm. just like heaven. Heaven is an eternal uh, destination, but it's not so much, I can't wait for, some people say, oh man, we just got to deal with this. We just got to live this life until death comes and then we can be with it. No, 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 no. Like you're missing, if that's your thought, you are totally missing it. We're not just getting through this life so that someday we can get to heaven where everything's going to be great. Like mm. uh, some people think that all oh, this is just going to burn. No, no, no. That's God is a God of stewardship. And so we have to take care of this place and take care of ourselves. Otherwise, what's the point of all this? And hell, hell is real. Ask the people that work in the Capitol building. Mm. Hell is real. Ask the people who, uh, who lost loved ones this past year because of COVID-19. Hell is very, very real, mm. and it's rampant, but so is heaven. They are always at war with one another until the final day when one triumphs over the other. And spoiler alert, we win, which is awesome. And we get to join in with that. But yeah, I would say uh, to answer your question, I totally think that hell is real among us right here and now. And there are people who go through hell. I don't think you need to look at more than one concentration camp to see that. It just reminds me of the, the partnership. Um, that you see throughout the scriptures mm-hmm. that I don't know what the percentage would be, but a high, high percentage of creator God, Yahweh, getting things done on earth for his will, his purposes, his good will, yes. his good purposes, his good ways, the way that he intended is through broken humanity. Uh, a, a broken people, mm-hmm. uh, a, a covenant, uh, Abraham, and Isaac, and, J- and, and a nation, and then, uh, you know, a person in Jesus to, who brings reconciliation. And there's this really powerful in, uh, engagement or interaction that Jesus has once he resurrects in the gospel or narrative of John, in John 20, where he comes through, he passes through the door. He doesn't even open or knock or anything. It's fantastic. Love that. Even though he tells us that if we knock, he'll open the, you know, and open the door to him. He, he just doesn't this time. Right, right. Um, and then he breathes, you know, pneuma. He breathes, says, re- receive the Holy Spirit. And some translations of that is he's breathing into the nostrils of the disciples, right? So cool. As creator God mm-hmm. breathed into the continuation. You talked about what sparked this was sometimes Needing a he, body. he needs a body. Yeah. Well, it's absolutely true. You see that throughout the, the, the Second Testament after Jesus' resurrection and uh, ascension, then in essence, it's go and do likewise. Do the things that I have done yes. and showed you. Uh, and, or, or, and another way to put it would be incarnate me. Yeah. You know, mm. this idea that we are to incarnate uh, the gospel and our king. And so I didn't know if you maybe want to just kind of touch a little bit more on that piece of uh, the body when it comes to the continuation of ushering in the kingdom. Maybe that's the wrong terminology, but um, uh, bringing heaven to earth, uh, pockets of, you know, Tim- Timothy Mackey and Khalil and I have talked about this a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, T-, T. Mack, as we like to call him, Timothy Mackey, uh, says, um, little pockets of heaven. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Everywhere. I like that. Know, as you do the things that our king has yeah. ushered in, commissioned us to do. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he would maybe unpack that a little bit more. Yeah, I, I, I love that thought. I, I kind of, uh, I, I don't know exactly, I, I'd love to read whatever Mackie's got to say, but I love that idea of pockets of heaven. And uh, as we usher in the kingdom of heaven, I don't know that necessarily means you quit your job, you get a job in ministry, or you walk around with your hands, you know, completely out with palms up all the time. I I don't know that it means be weird or anything. I think it probably means to live your normal life, but notice the details in your normal life because there are opportunities everywhere. 
no matter what, I mean, uh, and people always talk about, you know, if there's, I mean, we lived in Berkeley, California, so I always think of like the homeless people that lived on the, you know, the streets and everything and, you know, helping them out, whether they're because they chose to be or because life helped them become homeless. I, I really don't know, but that's the stuff that comes to mind. But there are, there are, there are ways like far beyond like, oh yeah, of course, go volunteer at the homeless shelter or go to the, the, the food kitchen and, you know, like uh, all that stuff is, yeah, it's all given and it makes for, you know, a great story on Thanksgiving, but uh, <laughs> there, there, there's probably something out and besides that, mm-hmm. like if you quiet yourself enough, you can, you can feel and hear God speak to you. So the normal people, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean normal people as if some aren't normal. I just meant the people that are usually in your life, your coworkers, your family, the people you rub shoulders with, the people at the gas station, the grocery store, whatever the case is. God can speak to you about something going on in their life. And it can be something they need. It doesn't mean you need to pay for everybody's groceries when you go through the, or pay for everybody's Starbucks behind you in the drive through I mean, You can do that. It doesn't necessarily mean that. But God may give you something very specific. And it depends on how open to the Spirit you are. I mean, you talked about uh, in Jesus and, you know, uh, Numa breathing into people's nostrils. I love that image because that's what he does with us. Yeah. We may not be able to see him doing it, but every single step, when we walk with him, he's literally walking with us. And he'll, he may not say something audible, but he may give you thoughts in your mind that aren't your own or give you a feeling in your heart that feels like it came from some other place than your own body. And when that happens, you have the choice whether or not to um, agree to that or to pull back from that. Uh, just recently, I was uh, running late on my way home Erica, my wife, that's my wife, my wonderful wife, uh, she texts me and she's like, hey, can you pick this up or whatever? So I stopped at a Walgreens and I went to this Walgreens and there was a girl there who used to work at our church and she was fired. Um, she was fired because of uh, um, choices she made with her, um, uh, her lifestyle. Um, she decided to engage in a homosexual relationship. She was fired from our church, whatever. I didn't really know anything about it, but I saw her there. And I was like, hey, what's going on? I was like, hey, I'm looking for this. Maybe you can help me um, locate, find, you know, whatever. So, oh, I know exactly where it's at. She showed me. I was like, great. Checked out, walked out, and I felt this moment where God spoke, like moments where he gave me an opportunity to bring heaven to earth. And he was like, go back in there. Like it wasn't audible, but it was this mo- like, no. I'm going to make you feel like getting to your car is actually disobeying me. Mm. Go back in there and talk to her. I'm like, but I've got nothing to say. <laughs> what in the world would I? But I turned back around. I walked in, and uh, there's a long line, and she was working the checkout. And just I was like, this can't be God because there's no clear way for me to. This is dumb. So I got in the car, and I started the car to leave. And I felt God say, no, you make a point to talk to this girl. And so I called her sister's boyfriend. This is weird. And I was like, hey, can I have um, your girlfriend's sister's phone number? And he was like, why? (laughs) And I was like, "Uh, it's weird. I just want to talk to her. He's like, yeah, I don't think she wants to talk to you. (laughs) I was like, yeah, I get that. I just, it's kind of a God moment. I just, I'm trying to be obedient. He's like, hold on. He's like, let me call her. I'll let you know. And so, like, <laughs> later on, he sends me her phone. He's like, she said it was okay. So I called her the next day, and I had nothing to say. And I was like, hey, um, I know it sounds really weird, but you helped me yesterday, and I left, and I felt like I had to go back in to talk to you. But then you were, like, helping ring people out. There's a long line. It's, I know this is totally weird. I have nothing really to say, but I just felt like God told me to, to call you. And then I had this, like, feeling that came over me, and I just said, I'm sorry. And I could hear her sniffle on the other line. And uh, I said, I don't know where this is coming from. I said, I don't know what happened. I literally know nothing. I said, but sometimes the church doesn't do a great job of, of handling things the way that we should. I said, I don't know what happened, but if we hurt you in any way, I'm so sorry. I said, we love you. I said, I love you. And she's bald on the other side, crying. I was like, wow, I didn't really expect, you know, <laughs> I'm not really sure what to do right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, uh, I said, you probably don't want to talk to me about any of this, but if you do, um, I'll always be available. And uh, she's like, no, this, she said, no, that's, this is enough. She said, uh, thank you. You'll never know what this phone call means to me. I now know that God still loves me. I just thought, wow, like I felt it from like, 
there was a moment where heaven touched earth mm. for this girl. And I don't know what a difference it makes in her life, but from that moment on, I was like, this, this is what God's talking about. How many times are we so into our own schedules and our own routines, our own we have to accomplish and work and get stuff done because our worth comes from what we can accomplish and we don't stop and pause. And we just skip over that Holy Spirit voice that speaks to us, that can cha- literally change lives around us because God is always speaking. He is always looking for a body. He's always speaking to us. It's just a question of whether or not we're listening and can hear it. As we're talking about this and thinking back to Jesus in the kingdom and kind of what Sean was talking about, about uh, Timothy Mackey and this idea of pockets of heaven, one of the things that he's kind of touching on is this idea that throughout Jesus's ministry and his mission, what he was doing was he was continuously bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. Yeah. And he's doing that visibly through signs and wonders, these miracles, these healings. The kingdom is a kingdom of healing. It's restoration. It's life. It's, it's, It's healing is the word I think we should focus on here. And so when we look at Jesus's miraculous work, what we're seeing is signs of the kingdom, mm. evidence that this, this kingdom is on your doorstep. This kingdom is here. Yes. And then he's inviting us in. Yes. And, you know, Jesus, the thing that was remarkable about Jesus in his day, too, is while so many people were afraid of catching someone else's illness, sickness, uh, sinfulness, yeah. Jesus wasn't. Yes. And so, you know, leprosy, a, a contagious skin disease, people would stay far away. Why? You don't want to get their sickness. Um, so, but Jesus is the one who leans in and he touches and he doesn't catch their sickness, but he provides and gives healing. And everywhere he goes, he brings that healing. Are you advocating for no masks? Is that what this? Yeah. I'm, just no, I'm, just kidding. Kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. Sorry. I took the air out of the room. You were so excited. <laughs> <laughs> but in the midst of that, it's it's interesting. What what Jesus is doing is he's even showing us, okay, my mission is to bring the kingdom to earth. And it's to yeah. bring healing and it's to bring restoration. And in doing so, as he plants these pockets of heaven, more and more of heaven is encountering more and more of our world today. Yeah. And then we, as his disciples, as his followers, are walking in his footsteps, yep. invited to do the very same thing. That our actions and our lives, our words would be bringing the same healing, the same transformation, bringing Mm -hmm. the same signs of the kingdom, but also planting that kingdom uh, over this earth with all that we do. And your story is that. Mm. In your words, in your actions, you brought healing to uh, a painful circumstance where where it was needed, and, Mm. and and she saw God in that. And and so as we're thinking about this, I'm thinking, okay, Jesus is bringing the kingdom into earth and he's inviting us into this. So for us as Christians, we too ought to be ushering in the kingdom in our actions and our lives every day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're getting at here too, is if that's true, and if that's what this prayer is about, verse 10 is your kingdom come and your will be done on earth right now, this day, just like it is in heaven. Yes. Um, what is what does that look like for us in just everyday life? Um, you mentioned being led by the Spirit and stuff, mm-hmm. but how can we make this more practical a little bit for us in everyday life? I would even ask, and that's a great question, and I would even maybe add on to it. How does the everyday follower of Jesus posture or position ourselves? to Mm, remain open and pay attention to the opportunities. It's good. What does that look like? I don't know. I have one thought, but I want to hear yours. I have a couple, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. I feel like we're all on the same thing, but we kind of were spread out a little bit. So I might just touch on a few things here and there. Um, first off, I, I think I'd like to um, just kind of clarify that with what we talk about with bringing heaven to earth, mm. we're not talking about kingdom now theology. That's something that's a little bit different. That kingdom now theology comes from the idea that somehow the world got spinning off his axis and uh, God has lost control and needs us to help yeah, him yeah. bring order. For, and that's not what we're talking about at all. God is sovereign. We believe that God is in control. And so um, it's not kingdom now theology, but we do Mm. believe that God is ushering the kingdom of heaven 
to earth and he does use us, but not because he needs us by any sense. When I say he needs a body, I mean that as a figure of speech because that's what he chooses to use, right. not that he's in need of us. So how do we keep this idea of bringing heaven to earth and hearing the Holy Spirit, keeping that in front of us on a day-to-day basis? That's a really good question. I was talking with a, a group of young adults earlier today, and uh, uh, we were talking about this idea um, of being more of a thermostat than the thermometer. So when you walk into a room, like we talk about extroverts, introverts, everybody thinks I'm an extrovert. That's actually not true. I'm an introvert. I draw a lot of energy from being alone. Um, So sometimes when I go to a place, especially if it's a place that I'm unfamiliar with, I don't know the people, I have to consciously make a decision that I'm going to be um, like what Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter six, seven, wherever it is about, you know, uh, treat others the way that you want to be treated. This is um, the summary of the Old Testament Mm. Uh, prophets, right? Like th- this is what it meant. So Jesus didn't even come up with the golden rule. He's just quoting the prophets of old, and it probably was around for many, many years even before them. So this idea of treat others the way that you want to be treated is very old, it's very ancient. It's the golden rule. We teach this to kindergartners when they first start going to school, but it's still relevant for today because all you have to do is open Twitter and say that we don't abide by it. That's true. Right? Like it's just yeah. the world is rampant right now. So in that, we need to decide before we get to a place, a location, before we start the, who we're going to be. Like treat others with it. And that passage doesn't necessarily mean you want people to be kind to you, you need to be kind to them. It, it means that, but it also means you take the initiative, you do it first. You don't just walk in and say, well, I want people to be kind to me, so when they come to me, I'll be kind to them. No, no, you go, you introduce yourself. Whatever it is that you want people to do to you, you do it before they ever get an opportunity to do it. You show the way, you lead. And that's what Jesus is saying in this passage. And I think the same thing is probably true when it comes to needing to hear from the Holy Spirit. You decide how your day is is going to go before it even happens. You decide before your feet hit the floor in the morning, who am I going to be today? Who am I going to listen to? What's louder, my subconscious or the Holy Spirit himself? Because mm-hmm. if I open my eyes to the idea before the day even starts that he might give me opportunities to make the, and I promise you he will every single day. If you ask for it, say, God, open my eyes to more that's going on than just what I can see with my naked eyes. Let me see into the spiritual world. Let me see other people's pain. Let me see what they're going through. Be careful and be careful what you wish for because you may just get it. But in that, you will have the opportunity to help usher heaven into earth by speaking words over people, by giving phone calls, by walking back into Walgreens, by giving something away, giving away a car, by uh, helping someone be fed, by uh, speaking something that no one would know except this one person. Have their mail read if you open yourself up to it. But you kind of have to decide beforehand. You decide who you're going to be and uh, somebody really smart once told me that and i've held on to it that's good good. it is good it's really good pre-decision decision decision. pre-decision decision decision. that's exactly Uh, right and you know we i mean as guilty of this as anyone i get up and i just start going about my day yes and sometimes i find myself not even intentional with what i'm doing i get to the end of the day sometimes i'm like what did i do Yes, like I wasn't. I didn't even accomplish anything. Autopilot. Yeah, I feel like it was almost a wasted day. Whether yep. I was just busy and got nothing accomplished, or was lethargic and got nothing done there either. But um, w- we we go through days inten- unintentionally sometimes. But this is making me think to to the fact that if we're deciding who we're going to be, then that means from the moment we wake up, there's there's a decision being made. And how do we de- how do we determine what it looks like to walk with God to 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 bring His kingdom to earth as as it is in heaven? Mm-hmm. S- it, is that starting in Scripture, starting the day with the Bible, so that that's our our frame of reference for the day? Is that prayer? It, what is what are some practical ways to just line ourselves up? I think that was kind of what Sean was was touching on yeah. too. Yeah, and, uh, and you know what, Jeff, you're talking about almost getting into sacred space. Yeah. Like Eugene Peterson says in, in his book, Along Obedience in the Same Direction, just hit me square in the face once when I, when I read this. He said that he believes one of the greatest idols of the American Christian is ambition. And he unpacks that. Um, we can put that book in the show notes and, and whatnot. But I just, it just hit me. Is wow. a, ambition achievement activities uh mm-hmm. ruth haley barton would say it as well and in her book we can put also in the show notes about uh, silence and solitude which brings me to silence yeah. and solitude yeah um are we spending time with 
no ambition other than the desire to abide mm. and like there's no activity yes and and it doesn't need to be 10 hours right but right. you know what i'm saying and Absolutely. so that was kind of s- something i thought okay how do we tether this to kind of the idea of what you're saying well, i was like you know the, i think it's essential to happen before you deciding what you're yes um who yes. you're going to serve and, and yes the person you're going to be are you going to be the person somebody else says you are or are you the person jesus says you are correct and, you know those types of things but um how important and you don't have to answer this first but how important is silence and solitude like to this idea here of yeah. um, being minded to one another? unparalleled and yeah. it's it's there, there's nothing more important. This conversation is on the basis that that's already happening in your life. If uh, ambition, so we wake up thinking about how to win the day. And I don't mean to quote Mark Batterson's <laughs> book out of, out of context here at all, because right, I, right. I, I haven't read it yet. Yeah. Um, he's going to send me a copy soon. And I'm excited about it. Um, but uh, just to take that phrase to we think about how to win the day from the moment we wake up. How do we cut corners, cut time so that we can maximize our efforts because we believe that our significance comes from what we produce. Mm. And being busy is a drug that a lot of people are addicted to and you don't know how to get off of it. And when you try to get off of it, you actually have withdrawals. So when you try this silence and solitude, when you try meditating in the morning after reading scripture, like you, you don't know how to train your mind because you're constantly on the go. But it's so, you have to. Like the people who drink coffee all the time, you need to go a week without drinking it and go through the headaches because it shows you that you're addicted to it. And you need to prove to yourself that you don't need it with anything that things people are addicted to. I think that's, I think it's great. What, social media, co- I think that at some point you need to train your mind, your body, and your spirit that you rely on nothing but the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone and a great way to do that is to wake up and uh yeah some people like to do their quiet time in the morning at night whatever the case is i think in the morning is a great case to start your day with what it's going to be instead of racing and trying to get stuff done and uh, start start with the lord because you start with him and you keep his spirit in sync with yours he might just lead you in different ways to bring heaven to earth, which is really what this is all about, right? It's not about your ambition. It's not about getting it done, getting the report done, writing the paper, making your boss happy. No, it's yeah. it's actually about just bringing, keeping the end in mind. Like the end in mind is just someday and Jesus is coming back. And until then, we have lots of work to do. And he's going to use you to do it. He's always speaking. Just are you listening? And that requires, as you're talking, I'm thinking, okay, your kingdom come, your will be done. A lot of the times, our day is, it's really my kingdom come, my will be done. Right. As it is in my mind or my heart. Yes, correct. And there, that's going to require a laying down of our desires and picking up God's. Um, and I just think of, you know, someone who was t- telling me about how, you know, they go to work and in as, as the shift is starting, they pray for the day and they pray for... Uh, the atmosphere of their work environment for God to move and God to do things and to give them awareness of, of what he wants to do yes. in the workplace. Yes. And, and through that, they find themselves not just showing up to work and uh, to do the routine job they were hired for, but they actually find themselves showing up to work for something bigger. Yes. And it's kingdom work. Yes. And they've had stories, encounters. Yes. In fact, someone actually, they ended up getting to pray for someone to receive Jesus yes. in a place and it took, it happened. And so yes, there, that's what this is all, all about. of that is, okay, my day today then is for the purpose of bringing the kingdom in. Yeah. Yep. And then you're asking God for that. You're asking God for guidance. You're asking him for help to open your eyes, to yeah. show you. And then like Sean said, you're, you're positioning yourself to say yes to it. Yes. That's exactly right. Mm. You're you're bringing healing to people. You're helping make people whole. You're connecting pieces. You're putting the puzzle together. You're 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 trying to um, uh, work with God. You're you're communing with God. You're partnering mm. with God in order to restore this place back to the way that it was created to be. That's bringing heaven to earth. The question is never how do I get into heaven. That's a that mm. that's a false question. It's not real. It's fake news. How do I get into heaven is not a, when the lawyer asks that. 
in uh, the Gospels, it's, that shows his ignorance. The question isn't, how do I get into heaven? The question is, how do I get heaven here? Mm. You wake up asking that question every single day, and I promise God will show you more than one way. So, Jeff, what's your benediction for us? May you see that in every single thing that you do, that you say, and that you think you have the opportunity to invite either heaven or hell here on earth because they are both very, very real. So may you see that the end is always in mind and keep your eyes open to those who are needing a touch, a healing, a word from God, and may you be the body that God uses to bring this peace here on earth because he wants to use you to bring shalom, to bring peace and help restore this place back to the way that it was created to be. So may God bless you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. May his hand always be with you, and may you be people who bring heaven to earth. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for being on the show with us. It's pleasure. always a pleasure. Pleasure. It's Total pleasure. pleasure Jeff. And always blessed by it. Um, man, if you're listening and this has been beneficial to you, we just want to encourage you again to to subscribe wherever you're listening, to, to hit the share button, to rate and review. That means the world to us. We have so many great conversations coming the rest of this year. We're excited for it and excited for what God might do in your life through it. Uh, may we remember uh, Jeff's benediction and may we bring the kingdom of heaven to this earth uh, as God has called us to. God bless.